I get it. You want to get good at Rocket League, but you don't want to spend hours watching videos figuring out how to do it. So in this one, I'm going rapid fire through 100 game changing tips, ranging everywhere from bronze to SSL in difficulty in order of how likely you are to actually follow them. In other words, rotations will go last. Anyways, let's do it. Section number one, settings. One of the most important settings is the subscribe setting. Out of 100 of you watching this, only 14 of you have it set right. Okay, I'm, I'm just joking, that, that doesn't count. Starting over, <laughs> number one, settings are the first thing you should get down in Rocket League. Lucky for you, many people like myself have tried and Bruh. failed with settings so that you don't have to. Check out a settings video or two if you're just starting out. Every single control in Rocket League has its use. Go through the tutorial and learn where every input is bound before you play online. You can find lists of the most popular pro settings on Liquipedia. This includes controller, camera, and dead zone settings. Almost all pros use the same camera settings, but few use the exact same controller settings. Copy with caution. Air roll and directional air roll are not the same thing. One requires two buttons to execute, and the other helps you miss open nets with style. You should bind power slide and air roll to the same button for keybind efficiency, improved recoveries, and because I told you so. Power slide or drift is one of the most underrated controls in Rocket League. The best players power slide for short durations, but often. Bind air roll left or right as soon as you start playing. You won't need both, but one is mandatory. Steering and aerial sensitivity might be the most overlooked setting in Rocket League. Make sure you try something other than the default when you start out. You can now change the size of player name tags in game. For better visibility, I recommend increasing this to at least 150%. You can check your FPS on PC by hitting F10. And if you're on console, you can just hit this power button here and never have to see yours. Almost all pros play on the lowest video settings for less distractions and competitive purposes. On the other hand, if you want more excuses for missing those opens, feel free to max these out. If you don't want to look elsewhere, do copy my camera settings, don't copy my controller settings, and if you prefer to spend your time on better things, just copy and paste my dead zone as well. Lastly, you're not allowed to use freestyle camera settings if you're not in Grand Champ. <laughs> Using freestyle camera settings in plat is a lot like wearing a stringer as the smallest dude in the gym. You are not gainer and dressing up isn't helping. There are six types of car hitboxes in Rocket League, but the names don't really matter because you'll end up using the octane anyway. The difference between hitboxes across car types is hardly noticeable. However, the design of cars in relation to their true hitbox is what makes some cars easier to use than others. 80 to 90 percent of the game you should have ball cam toggled on the only common exceptions are grabbing boost dribbling when the ball goes overhead and of course hitting nasty double taps <laughs> generally the more time on ball cam the better mechanics since the controls of rocket league are unlike any other not only do you have to train decision making but also the actual physical movements to make sure you can do what you want to do these movements are referred to in game as mechanics like with anything else, in Rocket League, you need to walk before you can run. Start with the basics, then scale to higher level stuff. Jumping. Many people don't know how jumping works in Rocket League. Tap to jump quickly and hold to jump for longer. The max jump height can be reached by holding down jump for roughly 200 milliseconds or one fifth of a second. Not many people know your second dodge is saved for 1.25 seconds after you let go of your first jump. Meaning, the longer you hold your first jump, the more total time you can have before your second jump expires. Your second jump is saved indefinitely if you become airborne without using your first jump. This normally comes into play when falling off the ceiling, but if you're ever bumped into the air, remember that you always have a flip. Direction in Rocket League is relative. This is why flipping backwards, as in a musty flick, for example, can actually propel your car forwards. 
All flicks, except for sideways ones, can be canceled at any point by quickly pushing your joystick in the opposite direction that you initiate the dodge. This is called a flip cancel, and it's what makes mechanics like the half flip possible. Half flips are the fastest way to turn around in Rocket League, and many people don't know there are two ways to do that. You can perfect half flip by flip canceling straight backwards and then air rolling, or you can short flip by doing a slightly off center backwards flip cancel. Use a perfect half flip to turn around 180 degrees and what I refer to as this short flip to turn anywhere between 90 and 180. Speed flips are the fastest flip in Rocket League because your nose stays forward and tilted down throughout the motion. There are also two ways to speed flip. The first is just a slightly off-center diagonal front flip cancel, and the other takes advantage of the fact that when you hold arrow left or arrow right in game, you automatically flip that way. I teach the former. Since the nose of your car is always facing forward in a speed flip, they can also be used in the air to pre-flip and track down balls quicker than any other way possible without ever having to let go of your boost. Always hold power slide when you land to conserve momentum. Unless you are landing perfectly straight, which is basically never, power sliding will always conserve speed. Get in the habit of always holding this button down when you land from an aerial. Don't underestimate the previous tip. No matter what level you're at, you could always be power sliding more. This includes, of course, power sliding on the ground, but also know that you can use power slide along walls or even when going for ceiling shots for smoother recoveries. The part of your car that connects with the ball matters. In order of strongest to weakest, the parts of the car are corners, front rim, hoods, back and sides, and then underside and wheels. The previous list isn't perfect, but when attacking the ball, aim to connect with the front corners for the most power. This holds true off the ground, walls, backboard, and ceiling. Always hit with the nose. If you have the option between jumping and flipping or just double jumping, always opt for the version with the flip because it's going to add extra power to your shot. A lot of people underestimate the height you can get before flipping. If you hold down jump, you can reach a ball above the net and still have enough time to flip into it. Many players boost up to the ball, then slow down to shoot, when in reality, you want to do the exact opposite. It's better to take more time on the read and commit 100% to the shot than have to second guess yourself because you're going too fast. Always boost through your shots. Air roll is quickly becoming a mandatory part of high level gameplay because it adds another dimension to your aerial car control. Without air roll, you can only pitch, pivot, or steer one at a time. But with air roll, you can change not only the direction your car is traveling, but also the direction it is facing. This is why learning directional air roll is so important. When you're ready to learn advanced aerial mechanics, start with simple fast aerials and air roll adjustments. You can use my air roll videos to learn this faster. When fast aerialing, always pull back on your joystick as far as possible before double jumping. Also, boost throughout your fast aerials. Ceiling shots are actually one of the easiest mechanics that I'd place in the flashy mechanics category. Learn these first to get a good grip on how to properly set up aerial mechanics. Air dribbles are the most common high level mechanic because they allow you to maintain possession throughout the movement. When air dribbling, focus less on pushing the ball forward and more on pushing it upwards. Distance will come. Aim to score your air dribbles one goal length above the real goal. This will reinforce the previous tip. If someone is contesting your air dribble, focus on getting behind the ball and setting up for a safe 50-50. Fact is, most players can't even win 50-50s on the ground, so their chances are slim to none in the air. Hold air roll to reduce knockback when colliding with the ball or transitioning into a controlled aerial touch. Remember to create space between your car and the wall on double taps to avoid smushing the ball against the back wall. When going for flip resets, rather than hovering under the ball, fly forwards and then pull down on your joystick to secure the reset. When going for flip reset musties, make sure to initiate the musty flick when your car is nearly pointed straight down. If you flip too early, you'll lose the scooping effect of the musty. The next time you go for a double flip reset, or your first double flip reset, remember to point your car a little diagonal on the speed flip to make sure you travel in line with the ball and not away from it. Recently, Halfway Dead popularized a new method based off the wave dash to get an instant speed boost when landing or coming off the wall. This new mechanic is called a curve dash. Check out my tutorial after the video for an in-depth explanation. Rocket League is hard. 
If you're having trouble wrapping your head around certain mechanics, use Bacchus Mod to slow down the game speed and learn the mechanic in slow-mo before you ramp back up to real speed. I have tutorials on literally every Rocket League mechanic that you could think of. So before you start training a mechanic, check out somebody's videos, doesn't matter if it's mine, to just make sure you're not developing bad habits or just wasting time when you don't have to. Offense. Do not dump and chase. Your number one goal on offense is to get as close to the net as possible before taking your shot. This means if given the choice, you should not boom the ball into the opponent's corner. That's where defenders want it to go. Instead, take the ball up close in the center of the field to create a powerful shot with the highest chance of actually converting. When attacking with a rolling ball, incorporate lateral movement to create bounce and generate some options before you shoot. Driving the ball in a straight line at the opponent's net is the easiest way to just get tackled. Stop trying to force goals. I see a ton of situations where players get tunnel visioned on outplaying opponents rather than just beating them. And yes, there is a difference. The classic example is trying to knock the ball around an opponent only to get 50 right back into your own net. Moral of the story is focus less on putting the ball in the opponent's net and more on just getting the ball around them. Goals will come. Occam's razor. The simpler attacking method is almost always the better one. If given the option to shoot top corner or start an air dribble, just take your shot. This applies mostly to champ and below, because frankly, from champ downwards, you don't need to beat the defenders to win the game, you just need to let them beat themselves. Stop playing for the pass from your solo queue teammate. Ask yourself, how many times have I passed to a teammate in my last six months of playing? And if the answer is greater than zero, stop lying to yourself and get behind your teammate. The upfield pass is not coming, and even if your teammate wanted to, they'd probably mess up the placement anyway. Stop giving up on the attack and stay upfield. This is mostly a boost dependency issue, but tons of players will rotate back to get corner boost, to get half boost, without even looking at the play upfield. This happens a lot with sustained attacks, where players will rotate back, and then their teammate will send a rolling ball right to the center of the field, and nobody's there to score it. So, do not leave your teammates upfield in a 2v3 unless you are literally zero boost or if you're deathly scared of opens, which, now that I think about it, actually makes a lot more sense. God forbid you somehow receive a pass, don't feel the need to shoot it right away. Remember, if there's a way to get closer to the net before you take the shot, go for it. You'll convert more from up close than from afar. Don't get baited on centers. This goes hand in hand with tunnel visioning and forcing goals, but the rule of thumb should almost always be if you see your opponent going for it, wait for their challenge before attacking the center for yourself. Think risk reward, right? If your last man getting beat costs you a goal, but challenging when the opponent is already there doesn't secure one. So only go if you're confident. If you're having trouble with offensive positioning, follow the 70-30 rule that states move 70% of the distance to where you think the ball will be centered, but no further. This gives you the ability to commit in front, but also backtrack if the ball gets cleared overhead. Shout out to Coach Curtis for this tip. If given the choice, you should always wait as long as possible before taking to the air to preserve your options. An example that I saw over and over again when I was playing in-houses with some of the guys from my coaching program is jumping too early on balls that are flying away from you. Not only can you track a ball quicker on the ground, but you'll also save boost and be able to turn back if need be. If everything else fails, be decisive. Mid-game is not the time to be self-critical. Go with your gut in-game and review afterwards. Hesitation makes every option bad, so take your opening or bail while you have the chance. Save your flip. Players through the middle ranks have the tendency of flipping into every ball they hit, which makes their play one-dimensional. In general, go for more two-touch plays. The difference between the plat to champ range and the GC plus range, from my experience, is that GCs know how to play for the second touch. The most common ways you will score all the way up to GC are simple power shots, dribbling, and scoring open nets. Master these skills. Remember, it is almost always easier to read the ball off the backboard as the attacker than as the defender. Use this to your advantage, especially at the lower ranks. Often, just hitting the ball over the net and letting the goalie flop is going to result in an open net. Defense. Rotate back post. 
it is always easier to save a ball in front of you than one shot behind. When defending your net, keep the goal 100% in front of your car. Never retire to goalie. Low rank players seem to like to play Rocket League like it is an on and off switch. They either defend or they attack. But in reality, you should be contesting the attacker for the full length of the field by shadowing their movements. This applies pressure and creates more chances for you to stop their attack before it reaches your net. Most players overestimate the amount of boost they need on defense. Truth is, you can save almost any shot with just 24 boost. Remember, your boost meter doesn't matter if the ball's in your net. Stop defending from inside your net. There's some misinfo being spread on defending and being in your net is almost always not the way to go. Defending from under your net is like defending in basketball from under the rim. You're just asking to get clipped on. I know this is a hot topic, so I actually shot this DM to Waiton Pilkin asking him what he thought. And I think his take on it is actually super, super wise. So check this out. Waiton said, back post is an extremely good fundamental rule to learn. But at the higher levels, we are allowed to break those rules sometimes. For defending from inside the net, I found it useful for when the opponents are taking a shot from really far away. In these cases, you already know that no matter where they put it on net, you'll be able to make the save. In this case, defending from inside the net is usually better because it gives you a better angle on the clear. And so, in general, I totally agree with what Waiton is saying. And just like Waiton says, these tips become less black and white the higher rank you get up. Generally, if you are inside your net, something probably went wrong with your rotation. But using the inside of your net to get momentum before you start on your clear can be used situationally. Use the backboard. If you have the option to defend using the backboard or not using the backboard, using it is almost always the way to go. You'll save boost and be able to wait longer before committing and having to go airborne. A good rule of thumb is to just always clear the ball to the corners, but sometimes you'll find opportunities to clear the ball over the opponents if you're looking out for it. Don't save the ball to the center. Stop pre-jumping. Just like on offense, players will often panic and jump to contest shots way before they have to. I think there's just a massive issue in the lower ranks of people not understanding how to fast aerial properly and get their car in the air. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend you check out my fast aerial tutorial, even if you think you're aerialing right, you're probably not. Just like on offense, stop diving in when you don't have to. If you've ever watched a pro player, count how many near goal line saves they make. This is not a coincidence. Good players are patient and use every second they have to their advantage when playing defense. Fake challenge more. Most players will panic and fumble the ball if you just get near them. Use this to your advantage to trick opponents into throwing away possession before they get to your net. Equally, don't throw possession on defense. Just because you have the setup to boom the ball away doesn't mean booming it is always the best option. Practice catching the ball and controlling it up the field. You'll find throwing the ball less on defense gives you more chances on offense. Rotation. Understand your role. Think of Rocket League rotations as places in line. First man is in the front, second man is second in line, and third is in charge of holding the back. When you're first man, your goal should be to hit the ball, then get to the back of the line. Generally, the faster the ball is going, the further back you should position. Equally, the slower it is moving, the closer you can be to the play. Now, this doesn't account for things like bounce or height or a ton of other factors, but use this as a general rule to figure out how close to the ball you should be. Pathing matters, but so does timing. Rocket League rotations are about being in the right spot at the right time, not just being in the right spot, period. So when thinking about rotations, your goal is twofold. Ask, where do I want to be? But also, when do I want to be there? Then pick your route accordingly. Rotating along small pads is safer than rotating on big boosts. What I mean by this is oftentimes when you commit to picking up a big boost, you are stuck on that line. Following boost lanes, on the other hand, keeps your options open and allows you to cover more of the field as a single player. Also, boost lanes are the paths created by small pads on all Rocket League standard maps. Memorize their locations. Rotations are meant to flow in one direction. If given the option, you should always let the person moving into the play take the ball and the one moving out rotate back behind. Never double back on your teammate's shot. For the same reason, you want to rotate 
off the ball when exiting the play. Exceptions occur, but generally, if the ball is on the right side of the field, you want to be rotating back on the left side of the field. If the ball is on the left side of the field, you want to rotate back on the right. If you don't, you're going to be dunking your teammates on the way back, and this also creates awkwardness and double commits. Don't flip without a destination. Playing fast is not about moving fast. It's about knowing when to use speed and when to save it. Don't just speed around the field chasing the ball, or else you're always going to be one step behind the play. Save momentum. If you're ever sitting still, it usually means you're getting to your destination too quick or you're just timing your rotation wrong. Now, sometimes plays will get awkward and there's no avoiding it in the lower ranks, but good players always stay moving, even if it's just doing a figure eight. You can use the insides of the nets to maintain momentum. Practice driving up and out, then wave dashing down to quickly recover after a failed attack. High level rotations don't apply to lower ranks. Don't just do what the pros do if you don't understand why they do it. Watching high level play is a great way to get ideas for how to navigate certain scenarios, but always remember to factor in your mechanical ability versus theirs. Some of my favorite educational commentaries come from pros like Verge, Lethemir, Musty, and of course, John Sandman. Training, if you haven't caught on, Rocket League is hard. If you want to progress with both your game sense and mechanics, a good rule of thumb is to train at least as much as you play. Always do free play before queuing online. The greater your mechanical toolkit is, the more important this becomes. Rocket League training packs are a great resource for training specific mechanics, but don't underestimate the importance of the fundamentals. Shooting, dribbling, recoveries, and reads make up 80% of the results of this game, so don't spend 80% of your time practicing flip resets. Workshop maps are a critical part of training card control in Rocket League. If you aren't familiar yet, take advantage of workshop maps. You can use Bacchus Mod to get more reps in free play. Practice using the D-pad to get accustomed to what shortcuts do what. Mentality. Of all games, Rocket League is a game of physics, not luck. Take ownership for every outcome in your games if you actually want to learn and get better faster. Don't solo queue. Just trust me, don't solo queue. At the end of the day, play for improvement, not rank. In the grand scheme of things, this one game in plat means nothing for your overall development as a player. Seriously, don't waste your time getting angry at plats. As a bonus, you can turn off all chat to prevent tilt. Whew, there you have it guys, that is 100 Rocket League tips that hopefully will change how you approach this game, and I really do hope helped you regardless of where you are in your Rocket League journey. The journey to the highest levels of Rocket League is not an easy one. And from my years and years of playing this game, one of the best tips I can give to you watching this right now, regardless of where you're at, is to find players to help you on the trek. Some of my favorite memories in this game come from queuing games, not by myself, but with other people. The truth is though, it's hard to find good teammates, which is why I'm super stoked to announce a total revamp of my private Discord server. So if you're interested in getting involved with an active training community of high level Rocket League players, click the video on screen for more details on how to join. If you're new here, I run a six week private coaching program where I train with my players in real time to help players climb everywhere from plat all the way up to grand champ. And just like with the Discord server, go ahead and click the video on screen for more info. This was a hundred game changing Rocket League tips Shout out to my editors for sticking with me on this one. If you want to support the troops, like this video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.